The Italians were good for one thing, and that was news. <laughs> In no. Hello, and welcome to the Cowboy for Game Yu Gi Oh! podcast. I'm your host, Jake. Today, we are joined by Ben from Nolan CCG. Hello. And returned by Andrew from Cowboy for Game, believe it or not. Your local <laughs> Thunder player. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's almost like we just have a rotating cast of Flunder players coming <laughs> to this podcast. Yeah. Wait, who it's... else is rotated with Flunder here? Blake. Yeah. All he does is just play Flunder online. Yeah, I suppose that's fair. Yes. Uh, how was our week in Yu-Gi-Oh? Uh, let's start with Ben. Um, yeah, my week was alright. Tuesday, I had already abandoned it, and I was like, I literally don't care about how my Tuesday goes. I showed up with, like, half-baked to Element, <laughs> and I was like, my stuff just hasn't arrived in the mail yet. So, let's just go we'll play what we play and then we'll figure it out from there um i can't remember how i went i think i went like x2 or something and then next day all my stuff gets delivered uh so then we come to today i'm playing dragon maid uh... <laughs> <laughs> makes sense i, don't know why... I was playing half baked here because i didn't have it and then when i got it i was like dragons <laughs> well i haven't gotten the, the uh issues and stuff yet that doesn't. Oh, that only arrived in Australia on Friday, so mine won't arrive till like Wednesday, Thursday next week. Um, this sense. is the part where Jake realizes that I bought it and didn't tell him. <laughs> uh, I, know. I know you told me uh, how you got it. Okay, yeah, true. There we go. He's just been telling everyone, but not to tell everyone else. Yeah, I was like, hey, I'm <laughs> getting work. this. Don't tell anyone. <laughs> uh, um, to be fair, Dragon Maid got jacked with uh, all this yeah, steel spawn all the and stuff. other stuff. It's a good deck. I was saying it reminisces me of Orcus a little bit, where I'm like, oh, it's this, but just also Fenris and also Mistyl and all that stuff. Just like throwing them all around. Like, bah, bah, bah. It's a good synergy, though. It works well when you draw well. Um, in my game three yesterday, I did not draw well. It got a bit brutal. Um, yeah. Overall, I'm enjoying the deck. I'm going to play it for at least probably like the next week or two until I'm like comfortable with the Shizu tier, and then I'll play a Shizu tier probably for the rest of the year. That's going to be fun. I'm going to really, really enjoy playing the same deck for a, I feel like I was going to say like three months but I'm only playing it for a month well mm. by the time I start playing it it's going to be a month after one month years. and a half yeah yeah whether we can or not we'll find out yes uh, emergency band um this week Tuesday was good uh, I got to the finals undefeated uh lost the finals to Leo so first time in a while I've lost to uh Tielemans with Flunder <laughs> the uh the new support makes it a fair bit harder to crack the um and some of the old stuff that they're now playing, so the spell and trap negates and some of the other things, it's a little trickier. Then you're lightning storm the back row, and then it's like, yeah, you get rid of it, but then they all seem to do something. Yeah, they all do something when you pop yeah, them. Yeah, I'm, Everything's like, I'm like, good. I can't win either way. But, um, yeah, that was pretty good. And then uh, today, I decided to play Drake Slayer because I got all that stuff from in. I finally got enough. Uh, look, it didn't go super well. Um, but, yeah, I was still happy with it. I'm still learning it. That's That deck's like really complicated like there is a basic strat uh combo which i probably still stuffed up um but i think that the tricky part i've found is that you there's a lot of times where you summon from deck yeah and it's knowing in between three and seven moves later which one you actually needed to have been on the field did it need to be yeah. the tuner did it need to be the spellcaster did it need to be the other one have i left enough in deck to uh continue pushing and playing have i left enough of the right scale to search to fix it up later yeah uh, surprisingly complex and needless to say I'll be playing Flunder at YCS because that is pretty damn straightforward <laughs> did you shift to uh, them? yes uh, oh. I didn't shift it today oh you played I was you, playing Drake you played it today. today no no I'm mean, playing at YCS it's like, did you oh. shift to them? yes oh, oh yeah he that, was predicting yeah. the future I that is the game plan um, just draw shifter takes a lot of skill and Actually, it's good just on that briefly I was watching um, the stream for YCS Pasadena this morning mm. um, literally the first thing I tuned into was uh, game 3 of round 2 I think it was which was tier vs Flunder uh, Flunder went to D shifter in uh, draw phase they dropped Herald of Orange Light with one of the mills uh, milled 5 and they were all 5 different tier names good lord <laughs> it was kind of bonkers I was like holy shit sometimes you just win <laughs> yeah just get good scrub by far out. Yeah, I was very surprised by that. Um, so my week. Um, didn't play Monday. Didn't play Saturday. Uh, Tuesday, I Depending had. Wise, like we play Monday and Saturday. <laughs> I know why you don't. So I don't know why you don't. You all attend just to watch Andrew win on a Saturday or a Monday. <laughs> well, not soon because I'll have negates for the shifter. Literally, the only thing that complicates that matchup is the shifter, and to an extent, the other thing. Alright, sure. Uh, but anyway. Um, so, 
Tuesday, I had enough of the new stuff that I could play it because um, I bought a few packs and pulled um, the Rukalos and I'd gotten some other commons and stuff. So I was playing sort of a slap together, sort of mid-ish tier element. Basically, just the Rukalos is like bonkers and then the new stuff is really good. My favourite of the new tier element cards though is the Spell and Trap Spin. That card is fucking so good. Mm. Yes. But I like Scream better. They're both good. I Don't think get Scream me wrong. is the best card. Scream has more overall utility because it does more when it goes to grave. When yeah. Heartbeats goes to grave, it doesn't do as much. It's the it's like Scream Reinhardt is like the the ideal opener now, right? I think I so. Think. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's my favorite of the new ones because that was again one of the things that tier elements didn't have before yeah. was spell and trap removal that wasn't a trap. Yep. So now yep. having that, and not and not being as restrictive as some of the other cards, because all the other ones need a tier element on the board to activate, this one doesn't. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, they did get a solid boost, and I could really feel uh, that in the finals that I most recently had. I'm sure that'll be on the Ben's channel at some point, but um, yeah, I was like, oh, there's a lot more teeth in this deck now. It's not just mill and summon, it's, yeah, a bit of back row control now. It's kind of really changed um, how it feels like to play against that deck. It would help if I've got my hands on it to actually feel it but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know I'll figure it out eventually uh, and then today um, I just had two of my absolute worst matchups uh, both of them being Exorcist all hey, I was to Exorcist today as well all I wanted today was to verse fucking Terrellement I was like give me Terrellement and then I just didn't verse Terrellement all day <laughs> and in, in jo against Josh in round 3 I was like finally a white deck and it like mattered that I had the bestials and then he activated Super Factorial to like XE summon, and I was like, I've got this. Activate my call by the grave. Realized I played the Incapone column and just scooped. He didn't even realize I'd played the Incapone column. I like, did it, and he's like, oh, so I can't XE anymore because it's this. And I'm like, no, I'm scooping. I activated the Incapone column. It's game over. I was oh, like, ben. yeah, my bad. Shit. Ben, 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 Ben. He's uh, not messed up to it. Yeah, that's <laughs> true. Um, but yeah, Exorcist are hard fucking just because, um, like, the monster's one thing of like the banish tag out banish blah 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 yeah it was more that he had four back row and i had not nearly enough removal because like one was called by one was another banish yeah because like if i'd been able to clear at least one of those back row before i started i had been able to play through that board game one when you played chad round one he uh activated dimensional fissure and then also had the macro set oh yeah yeah that was uh no that was game two because i had oh, the, outside two? the cosmic set okay he's like had the yeah dimensional fissure i'm like looking at the cosmic i'm like oh it's not a lost cause like we can we can do this so cosmic that he's like on resolution <laughs> flip back around like yep <laughs> back, back when that deck's getting so problematic to, to be honest actually i was able to play through that as well too it was like it was the extra two banishes that he had spot removal so it was because i had um i just opened really good it was like lust of Penalm and purple poison i checked purple poison i'm like oh this doesn't have to be anywhere it just has to be destroyed that's fine yeah and then it was just yeah on activation of luster flip this banish luster banish this and i'm like yeah all right fair enough we're done but um yeah exorcist is like obnoxiously powerful off of very few cards yeah like martha has made that deck obnoxious yeah yeah it's obviously it depends it gets, on the matchup too yeah however it does play in the beer oh yeah the standard if, open is exactly it, five summons yeah keep that in mind people I was, exactly five summons to be fair i didn't get to verse a lot of the, the standard meta but like i was just thinking that today i was like man i'm pretty sure nib would have like done really well for me today like in pretty much every match i was in i think is it Rukalos is the card that can negate Rukalos is the one that negates Nibiru. Okay. That's why it's no longer as powerful against Tyrell. Yeah. And mm. also, like, even if they don't happen to get to a Rukalos, most of the time the stuff that you're sending, depending on timing, is like, oh no, anyway. Mm. Yeah. It used to be a point, like, if they got to their end board, you Nibiru, they're done. Yeah. But now they're setting up a Rukalos at a point where it's like, oh, I can nib them, but it won't matter. Yeah, it doesn't do anything. Mm. I'm iffy on whether or not I want to take the nib out I think my side deck at the moment is going to be problematic for Dragon Maid I need to make some slight changes my side so. deck is garbage I need to change it I sided heavily for Flanderis and Andrew was like I'm playing this and <laughs> I was like I knew you were playing this I'm still sided for Flanderis <laughs> <laughs> but here we are that's the key to win your wife's yes just just, side you know, just side correctly for yeah. all 12 of your matchups that you don't know exactly very good very but very good how's the news this week Jake 
Uh, there's a bit of news. Uh, so we'll start with the uh, upcoming Battles of Legend set. We didn't start with Mastered all this week. We didn't, because there's not much to talk about. Good. Um, but uh, <laughs> we have some leaks as to what's coming out in that, in, in terms of rarities and actual cards. Uh, so it looks like Plunder Patrol is getting a reprint, because uh, we've got, uh, is it Blackbeard? Yeah, Blackbeard. Yes. The link is yep. getting a secret. Yep. Um, we've got uh, number two, Zero Mosquito. Whatever that card is. I think it's like Dust Mosquito or something like that. Um, I think it's the true number card because the current number two is not the real number two. Yeah, or something, something numbers. It's, I remember seeing it pop up in some list from the OCG, but I can't remember what it does. It's decent. It's quite decent. Yeah, it's a rank two, so it might give some utility yeah. to Sprite, depending mm. on what it actually does. Uh, we've got Numeron Dragon. Um, that's been the sort of needed reprint. I, yeah. think, I think it got printed in the last uh, Battle of the Legend. Uh, it the one no, before. it was reprinted in the um, Legendary Duelist reprint set. That's the yeah. one they're introducing us use for OTKs, right? Yes. yes. Yep. Yeah, the rank 8 OTK thing. Yeah. Uh, Celine, the Link 3, gets a secret reprint. <sighs> just after I bought one like yep. a few weeks ago. Yeah, we just yep. paid like, what did I pay, like 50 bucks for it or something? Or, yeah. yeah. Something obnoxious. It was a stupid price considering. Like, only Sky Striker was the one really using it. And even then, without help, they weren't really using it. They weren't using it anymore. Yeah. And the... Um, how far off is that? I think it's... Is it secret, that print? Or That's secret. That would yeah. be secret, yeah. yeah. How far are we off on that? I don't actually mid, know whenever it I think it's mid-November. It's, oh, so uh, it's it like oh, next week. Sorry, no. Where are we now? It's like uh, late November, early December set. Okay. So depends yeah, if it goes delayed. In the next month or okay. so. So yeah. I do regret my decision. <laughs> in summary. <laughs> Uh, we also get uh, one of the evil twin links is here, uh, Lila. So more than likely we'll get some the more others. of the evil twin reprints, which is yeah. kind of needed because like those ultras are going for about fifty bucks each. Those mm, links, it's yeah, kind of obnoxious. Um, we've also got uh, Artemis, the link one for Magistus. Yep, yep. That's getting a secret, which is nice. We needed a reprint. Yep, and we've also got um, Heavenly Spheres getting an ultra reprint. Came an ultra, didn't it? Yes, yes, it did. Oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> some variety. Yeah, I really love that uh, that change of pace. Yeah, it's really good, Konami. Very good. Couldn't give me a secret rare. You know what I was missing? No, no, uh, they couldn't give you that secret rare because they put that into Fusion Destiny. Uh, good, good. <laughs> I was just thinking on my uh, copy of Scales. I was like, you know what would make this great? Slightly changing the small letters under the picture. Like that's that's just yeah. what we need, bro. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Perfect. Very good. Um, um, also confirmed today, because it's the giant card for the YCS that's currently happening right now, uh, Doodle Dino is the secret Oh, uh, yes, rare. Doodle Dino. Mm, big yeah. Doodle. Yeah. Dino. Big old T Doodle. <laughs> yeah. Yes, because Dino really needed another way to pop cards and interact off turn. Ah, that's fine. Yeah. Actually, I mean, they lost house. Let's be so. honest. We, we've, yeah, we've lost, um, like, that's that deck hasn't been able to do anything for ages. Because it's, what, Miss Gwent and... Unless you definitely want Miss Play against yeah. the one person at Locals who's playing it. And he opens the absolute fucking nuts against you both games. Literally. You should have seen. He opened nuts against him and me. I against, literally never lost I remember. So. <laughs> I, can't, I can't sympathize. So <laughs> against me, he opened uh, Super Poly, Call by the Grave, and Pancratops, and still had enough to do combo off the last two cards. Mm. I got hit with... Uh, game 1 was OV Raptor, Branded Fusion, Four Hand Traps. And uh, Game 2 was uh, Triple Fossil Dig, Two Hand Traps. And I was like, cool. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. This is just everything. Just open good. Um, the one thing that we don't know about this, and it'll be interesting to see what they actually do, is they traditionally reprint a prize card in this set. I think we've had this discussion before, like off camera. I don't think you can do that this year. Yeah, well, I was running through my head of like what you'd yeah. actually read. Like, all of the jewel- old ones except for Blood Mephist. It's, so it'd be Dueling Dragon, right? Dueling Dragon or Blood Mephist, but... Dueling Dragons only just stopped being a prize card, so I just don't see them doing it. It's also it. useless, so like they probably could and it would make zero impact. Like, yeah. True. Like, I mean, and that's saying, like, Dueling Dragons stuck around way too long, right? Because of that, it was like, yeah. Well, yeah, because of the delay that we had, we had, they never three years like, of Dueling Dragons. Yeah, yeah, exactly right. We should be, like, what, another two prize cards ahead by now. Mm, yeah, if, in uh, a perfect yeah that's, a, that's actually a fair point. Because we've had Dueling Dragon for so long, like, there should have been... That vanilla that we had should have come into rotation a lot sooner. Yeah, yeah well, if you compare it to the time of what... Um, let's just go back to my favourite YCS, 2017, where we had, uh, for no reason at all, um, where we had Kaiser... Utopia Kaiser? Utopia Kaiser. And then, like, yeah. what was the time frame between that and the... They reprint, right? normally change it every Worlds. No, I mean, like, between well, when we got that uh, came out as a prize versus that got a... Two and a half years. 
Yeah, okay. So yeah, we are about due for Jewel Link's Dragon to come in this. If it does, if it doesn't, it really doesn't matter. It's a garbage card. <laughs> it yeah, no do one's going to play it. I think that's good, though. Like, I think that's a nice, in I've, a way... I've said this for a long time. Because yeah. mm. the problem cards, is they're legal, right? That's the problem. Yeah, yeah. they're yeah. legal, but, like, if you want to talk about scarcity, like, a Shizu card scarcity has nothing on a well, prize card. Yeah, of course not. Yeah. We did hit that point, remember, uh, the YCS Minerva? with... Well, Minerva's one, but we also hit it with... Chaos Emperor Dragon. Chaos Emperor Dragon. But that was a prize card, and then Jesse Cotton was like, you can play this in Thunder Dragons. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Off we go. Thunder Dragon yeah. Link. Just I found that external. super obnoxious when they were doing deck lists and deck profiles online Who's this? as well. It's just like, it's kind of necessary. Oh, I'm playing oh, sorry. Dark, I'm playing <laughs> Raw, I'm playing this $2,000 prize card. Yeah. <laughs> That's in his uh, current list as well too. I was, I was watching that uh, yesterday. I think it was on Killing Book or something like that. Yeah. Just... And yet again, he's made the price spike because like they're yeah. going for absurd money. Yeah, it's now. like it's like a hundred dollars for the secret. It's, it, it's such a nice. Um, yeah, it's such a cool deck as well. It's like just sixty card, just push, push, push. Effectively, like reminiscent of old Dragon Link. I was yeah. like, that's cool. I'm not gonna do it, but that's mm. cool. A, a, a fat deck that likes to put <laughs> stuff in graveyard. Yeah. Where else could you see that in this format? Oh, it has all that stuff. It's like literally, it has tears, it has a Shizu, it has Thunder Dragon, Wax it has Bisted in Bisted. there. Yeah, no, it has Bisted in there. Yeah, it has uh, a few other things like that. It was like, I mean, the dude's a genius, right? Like he fucking he gets the results. It's, it is what it is. You can't call it luck when what? you're like winning I wonder if YCS he's after YCS. Playing that at the YCS today. I don't know. Because he was. In hindsight, like, we will know. Yes. By the time by the time you hear this, it will it'll be. Yeah, established. So this it will sound like confirmed. a stupid question by the time you hear this. It's currently, I think they're playing round nine, day one, right now. As this is being filmed. Mm. So, when this airs, it'll be over. Yeah, um, just on that quickly as well. What are we thinking in terms of end result? Two um, element. Shizu. You reckon it'll just pack out top? I reckon it'll be heavy. Yeah, I think, like, so for example, like, on, on the point of, you know, as much as fun to triggers people and all the rest, I like, the ability... There are so many scenarios that pre Shizu you would just have locked it up with Flunder, and yeah. now you haven't. Yeah. Now they've got their Horror Initial Light, now they've gone having a soft turn beforehand. I think Flunder, as much as it cops some hate, was a great is a great thing that keeps that in check, and people have to respect it, or maybe it whittles someone down. I yeah. don't think it's going to be able to do it this time. Like, I reckon we'll have, what, is it top 32? Is it top one or 64? I think it goes to Surely 64. 65. It's 19. It'll be, it's like, it'll almost, be 64. Yeah, it's almost like 2,000 people We're there, We're pushing right? 128. Yeah. It's like 256 is 128. Yeah, uh, well, there are 2,000. So 2,048 yeah. should be the thing that breaks it into an, the next yeah. bracket. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so just under that. So it'll be top 64. Yeah. My prediction then would be... I'm, I'm actually going to go as far as saying I think there'll be over 55 Ashizu tier elements out of 64. 64. Yeah. yeah. I, reckon yes. it, I reckon it's just that good. It's... Um, Simply going to be a case of that versus Exo or Flunderese, and did they see enough shifters to stop them? Yeah, exactly right. That's exactly. Going to be did you win the die roll enough? Wins game one and three, kept your barrier on field. Cool. Yeah. You've won. You've or you've opened shifter each time. That's going to be the variance, hundred um, percent. I did see a rather interesting list that popped up on camera where it's they're playing Tier Element Sprite just to play Sprite on their turn one, so that when their opponent starts playing their Ashizu stuff, they start hitting their Tier Elements on the off turn. That's funny. Because the gigantic sprite turns off the magnets and everything. Yeah. And it's like, cool, you can't you, you can't be steal me anymore. You can't do this. I'm just gonna set up a sprite board and then when you start milling my deck, I'm gonna play Tour Element. And then all my Biz deals are also gonna fly out. Yeah. It's they like, just hit the issues you start milling, they're like, Oh shit, I bought a board no <laughs> What do you that do? That would actually be really funny to like play something that's not traditionally mill and then you just Yeah. I I like that idea. Mm. I'm not gonna play it because I don't wanna buy another engine. <laughs> I love I love that everyone's starting to look at all these bloody ridiculous um, techs to potentially run. So even Chaz was showing me today, a apart from the ones we already know, Necomane and or whatnot. Uh, yeah, I, I'm not going to pretend to remember what the name of it was, but some sort of spell. And it's just like, uh, if it's milled, your opponent can't special, I think it is, or something like that. Uh, hmm. Oh, no, no, sorry, no, it was if it's milled. No, I'm thinking of the field spell, sorry, no. He had a field spell that was... Um, was it a continuous spell? Yeah, no, no, it was a field spell. It was like if you're on your third summon, the thing ends. No, he did have one for mill. Oh, yeah, the mill? there is a there is a field spell that's like summon limit. It's like um, every, each player can only summon three times. The second they mill, uh, do summon the third, the third time, their turn ends. Yeah. Oh. Um, okay. No, there was some, sorry. I'll, I'll, have to, I'll have to circle back to it to remember. But there was some other. There's been a few interesting ones that are just like if you mill this from deck, this happens. Like yeah. we've got the Neko, and then there was another one. He was playing some uh, continuous spell against me. 
Uh, I think it was an Earthbound card or something similar. It wasn't that one. Never right now. Proceeds to try and scramble and see if they Neuron, can find tell it. me. Tell me your secrets. Um, but yeah, he was playing some continuous spell that's like, um, yeah, you just can't send cards from deck to grave. I was like, oh. Oh, that's, that's annoying. problematic. Uh, anyway, Lightning Storm. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, but anyway. But yeah, continuing on with news, uh, we have the very last uh, alternate arts announced for the Selection Pack 5. God knows when we'll get these, uh, especially considering this last one. Um, <laughs> well, odds on, we probably won't see them until our like, ma- like our mad- Magnificent Maidens next year. Yeah, this, yeah. This happened I dare last say time. this will take a long time. But well, like, they might. They, I don't want them to, by any means. I'd be happy to wait till Mavens. Mavens. Mavens 2, but, or Gold 4, or whatever you want to call it. Well, gold, well yeah, gold that's, the thing, that's the point I'm making. I do not want these printed in gold. Yeah. Like, these are time. some of the yeah. nicest alt arts that they've done in a while. And no, I don't Only gold. <laughs> Only gold, it. Jake. I hate it so much. Throw back to that. Well, uh, they reprinted the Appaloosa art in um, Ultra Art. In eventually. Magazine. Yeah. Eventually. <laughs> well, look, as long as I get an eventually, that's fine. Throw back to that access code that like everyone took the bait on, including myself. Like, do you that remember access that? The code gold? looked garbage. Too. I know, I know. But then we're just like, oh, yeah, we believe that that would do something that bad. Yeah. <laughs> And weirdly surprised that they didn't. Yeah. Is it an actual artwork there, or is it just... It was from it was the show. Oh, was it? it was just a screen cap from the show. <laughs> so I was uh, going to say, despite, like, even the fact that it was a bad art, it also looked bad in the art. <laughs> yeah. Like, just the quality of the <laughs> artwork looked really Someone shit. just ripped a PNG off the show. <laughs> it's dark magic and all over again. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, yeah, the last three that we have, uh, we have uh, For Ben, uh, Dragon Maid Hospitality. Yes. Good question. Yes. <laughs> I don't know what they're called. <laughs> and I carry out the few. Do we get an Empen alt art? No. no. Only this. Um, <laughs> then we have uh, Sky Striker Mobilize Engage. So that card's not getting banned here ever for like another year and a half because they'll have to sell this. We just have to acknowledge that it's just going to be a thing now. I don't want it to be a thing. Like, I'm, I've actually come to terms with it. I'm like, I've, it's so weird. As, as busted as it was and is to an extent, I'm like, I think we just power crept it like the different story perhaps if, if it does go to back to three that's yeah. probably is critical mass but i think it'll wind assist to the point where it's like no i don't think that engine's worth running in many decks now like it's just not good and also i think you can just chain bestials to banish the rain now right yeah like, that's the probably the best part it works i think the deck is just not competitive mystic mind banned as well if there's no mystic true. mind i think if that deck just kind of sucks yeah if that deck does lose mystic mind then yeah it loses a lot of its functionality yeah I'm surprised no one's actually gone down the path of doing like Sky Striker Runic. I feel like someone's tried it. The issue is it skips your battle phase and the deck doesn't really well, do that much. For yeah, you. Uh, I suppose. Yeah, yeah you kind of want to dump with Old Mate. And... Yeah. Yep. Uh, and then lastly, and I left it the last because I didn't want to discuss it at all if I had to avoid it. Uh, Eagle Twin, whatever. Would, which one's this one? I don't know which one this one is. The other one. Uh, we get. I think it's... Wait, go back. That's that's an awkward looking purple mark in the middle of a chest. Uh, yeah. Ugh, definitely know. just looks like she has sent nipples. Four, two, or? It's the link yeah, two. two. The so they've done both of them now. It's the Kissy Kill. One. Kissy Kill. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So they've done both of them now in the old heart. They gave Kissy Kill a hickey on it too. Yeah. <laughs> sure. This game is just fucking bizarre sometimes, you know? <laughs> Guess what art's not coming to the DZG? Yeah. I don't think oh, we're getting either two. of the two of them. Yeah, have you considered, uh, do you know what's in Lost Art for us in four years' time? We're looking at it. Both of these. Yeah. And they'll be worth so much money because... Cleavage uh, is illegal. Women. Um, Wait, actually, on this subject, is there any satanic satanic, inim- <laughs> satanic <laughs> imagery on uh, Macabre 2 or Invocation 2? Uh, well, oh, that, uh, I'm kind of curious, actually, though. Like, with the Lost Arts, have we set a precedent that they have realize that all that stuff was ridiculous like do you think we'll have censored arts moving forward considering now we've got lost arts to basically say i I think we we still get censored arts because they can't say that they're selling those to kids because if you put censored art like uncensored arts into the packs konami is then selling those to kids Mm. whereas if they're not in the packs and you get them via the lost art promotions you're actively going out of your way to attain these arts. They're not just something that can show up if a mum goes to Kmart and buys a pack and gives it to Billy. And hmm. Billy sees Booba. Yeah, Billy sees Booba. Seven-year-old Billy opens this up. What's Kissy Kill Leela, Mom? Jeez. <laughs> I, I want to watch a YouTube. Is no! <laughs> He's been corrupted. It's good thing. It's good thing none of these kids have ever been to the beach. 
Yeah, true. Like, <laughs> heaven forbid they see 2D cardboard. God forbid. Uh, uh moving on, we have <laughs> um well obviously Magnificent Maidens is our for most regions. Um and from that we have the list of the Pharaoh Rares. Mm. The card that's expensive, but you'll still be disappointed you pulled it because it's not a Shisu stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I hear that's, at least for me i'm hearing so many conflicting things about um the pull rate and yeah, also can we establish what's, so, the, what's the case it's a case is like four displays so here's, here's the place. thing a case Give is different match. in every region a case is different oh great uh however the north american short prints are like the shit cards you don't want it's they're the secret bizarre. Right? every no, so time it's all ultras. every time there's even yeah. a discrepancy between our printing and their printing yeah they get the better side of it no that's wrong because we got overprinted magician souls and they got short print magician souls they get entire boxes of starlights that's valid however yeah, we're discussing this <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. They're... your point's valid however shut up <laughs> their, their short prints are you're like... about relevance <laughs> i think it was on someone opened 54 cases and it was the 10 short prints were like just 10 fucking garbage cards you didn't want anyway it's like so cool dumb. gotta love it <laughs> but anyway, if you are um, semi lucky enough to pull a Pharaoh rare, here is what you could potentially pull. Oh, also, Pharaoh rares are easy to get in Europe. Yeah, so, because we got less of Shizu, so they need yeah. to fill the spots with other stuff. So I think a European for this set, I think a European case is ten boxes. A European case in North America, uh, sorry, a North American case <laughs> is six boxes. But you get less than one Pharaoh rare per case in North America, but you get two Pharaoh rares per case in Europe. Right. However, adding on to this, North American Pharaoh rares are secret rares, yes. European Pharaoh rares are ultra rares. Yeah, that's what I was getting at before, with yeah. the secrets and the ultras. It's bizarre. They need to get on top of this shit, because we've had way too many of these discrepancies between printings. Like, you've got the Starlight boxes for one, mm. like, that's dumb. Yeah. Then you've got the mistranslations that have happened for EU prints multiple times. Aruba. <laughs> so dumb. It's what was it? Manifestation was also that way? Uh, yes. Yeah. There was another one as well. We'll remember eventually. But yeah, but... like, they really need to get on top of this quality control. It could just be a case of whoever was, like, whoever's in the warehouse doing Pharaoh Rares in Texas is like, I don't like Ultra Rares. <laughs> but who's made these secret Rares? All of them. Mm. Like, the Egyptian God Cards were also secret Rares. I don't know, man. Maybe it's uh, maybe it's an inside job. He's got shares in uh, international yeah, postage. You could. could increase those swapsies. Yep. It's possible. I love that. Twenty five years later, as well, they still don't recognize like Oceania as a region. They're just like, like uh, you're part of Europe, Europe, right? Europe. You know, you guys uh, sent those guys. We're those literally prison- we're literally further away from Europe than they are. <laughs> and, like, you guys, you're the, they're the, the ones. Convicts. You guys came from there, like yeah. in yeah the 1800s. Yeah, same shit. Like <laughs> those are those colonial types. Yeah. <laughs> exactly right anyway back to the <laughs> the pharaoh rares we're getting uh so we've got red eyes uh dark magician girl uh because i realized is this the european ones or is this it's the, the same european cards one? it's just they get them in secret rare we get them in ultra rare right okay i'm on the same page here. Okay. yeah uh so yeah red eyes dark magician girl uh blue eyes it's one of the it looks like dog shit yeah it's one of the worst yeah. arts <laughs> um an elemental hero neos uh necro valley uh triple tactics decent didn't really need another high rarity printing, but okay. <laughs> uh, Seal of Orichalcos, uh, Toon Kingdom, Lightning Storm, uh, Crystal Bond, uh, Gold Sarcophagus, the true name. The Gold Sark one is the one that I like. It is nice. Yeah. It, I like them when they're thematic. So, like the Seal of Orichalcos, Necro Valley, True Name, Gold Sark, I think I may have said that twice, uh, Millennium Eyes. I kind of like those as Millennium Rares because it's on theme. Yeah. Mm. Um, but yeah, continuing on, we've got uh, Rotar. Change of Heart, Mirror Force, uh, the Millennium Eyes that I just mentioned, and Black Luster Soldier, Soldier of Chaos, the so, Link. What was that, 20? Uh, so that's a fifth of the two, set is four, available six, in Pharaoh? 10, 12, 14, 16, 17. 17, okay. Almost a quarter of the set's available in Pharaoh, right? That's a, a, fifth, a fifth. But from what I understand, some of these aren't actually pullable as normal ultras. They're only available in the Pharaoh rare. That was my understanding. I could be wrong. Okay. If, if Jake's true, I give baffled look on my face as to why Kami would do that. If Jake's wrong, Jake, you're wrong. It wouldn't be the first time. Uh, <laughs> uh, I'll quickly circle on to Masterful because there isn't much to announce. 
are basically uh, the pass resets in eight days. And oh, I gotta finish that. Shit. Yeah, you do. Yeah, That's you need to get your bitron, mate. I think I already unlocked the bitron, mate. I've just got to get to the hundred and get the stuff. There's not that many rewards after the bitron, mate. To be honest, they made this one shorter, but like still the same length. If that makes sense, like you, the bulk of your <laughs> the bulk of your rewards are at seventy five, but you still go to a hundred. You just get extra gems and ultra things and like okay, whatever. Okay, sure. I think I'm at like 72 with them. So like a bulk of the rewards are gotten at 75. Okay. What's the matter looking like on my still? Is it still heavily flunder uh, or is it... Branded Despy is the top performing deck yeah. at the moment with uh, Flunder and Sword Soul sort of competing for second. Mm. It, it's no issue to be with Flunder. Mm. Flunder's too good. I think map went to two there or something like that. Like Yeah, I just replaced it. With a harpy's feather duster, so when my fucking when I get dusted on my yeah, you search another thing, I just search it. And I'm like, cool. I'm like, chain harpy's feather storm. So your turn is now over, and now I'm gonna search the duster. So when you set your cards, I'm like, get rid of them. <laughs> uh, what was I gonna mention? I think half the problem with um flunder, at least on master duel, is that people are monkeys and they don't actually know how to play the deck. Oh yeah. Like they sort of just were. They rely on the floodgates to actually get them through their plays rather than mm. actually thinking through what is going to be the most beneficial way to play it. Like, you can tell when you verse someone that's very good with the deck as opposed to someone who's just like, ha ha, very steady. <laughs> See, the other day I played against... Uh... Back in time. See you later. No, but I played against Cyframes. And, like, oh, I knew I was playing gosh. against Cyframes, so I was like... We're going to lose hmm. that deck so frustrating. <laughs> I hate versing I went, it. Like, map... Robina, I had a second Eaglin in hand, so it was like Map Robina Eaglin was my hand, and I went like Map Robina banish the Eaglin, and I got hit on, I got gamut on the thing, and I was like, oh, that sucks. But I already had the Eaglin, so I searched the barrier statue, then summoned the barrier statue, and then just like hard all the Eaglin, and then it skipped around to his turn. He started activating all of the Cyframe, like the pure Cyframe field spell and everything, and I was like. Oh, as long as this barrier statue's here, I'm just one. You can't yep. literally do anything. <laughs> yeah, I don't think there's a summon or a card that gets there out of that. literally no card that deck announces it. Back in the day of, like, actual, um, Cyframes when we had it, because we were playing a little bit of it, I think it was just, it was all off-brand stuff that you did. Like, I think it was, like, Wind Up wind Rabbit. Up rabbit. And yeah. Like that. yeah, that was, like, your one little <laughs> thing for slow damage. I never got around to playing it, but I wanted to play for a while, uh, Cyframe Mech Knights, because... Purple banishing would trigger Lambda to search. I'm gonna be real, Jake. I thought you were gonna say uh, Cyframe Gradle. Haha, <laughs> 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 have a monster on the like, board. <laughs> he was trying to keep it under wraps for us, yes, but uh, I guess we're not. <laughs> yeah, I've just exposed him. Li done. Literally, the only reason I never pursued it is because I needed one card, which was the spell that like put the psychics back to synchro summon from banished. Yeah. It was a common that was $20. And I'm like, I refuse. No. <laughs> I, I'm not doing that for some shit tier deck. <laughs> no. So I'm thinking of with the Draco. Actually, like Draco is, to be fair, is actually pretty decent, but I'm also like, how much do I really want to play this deck? Because like, if I take it seriously, I got to get like Fenris and drag uh, and, and some of the Bistas stuff. And I'm like, I don't, know how far, I don't know if I want to spend another $400 fairness, on the In fairness, Andrew, you've gotten a fair way with Flunder without having to spend a fucking dollar. I think you Those could maybe... Those cost me 20 each, alright? <laughs> <laughs> Maps for 20 each I at the time, so maybe, I Exactly. I think maybe you can splash on some cards that will be staples moving forward. Like, maybe not Fenrir. I'm not rushing out to buy Fenrir's at the moment. Completely saw the side change of subject. Remember I when like Flawanderies came out and we were like... What if, what if Sword Soul is just better? And then we both got Flanderese, played it for a little bit, then kind of switched decks, and then Sword mm. Soul died, so we switched back. <laughs> and was like, yeah, I, I, never, <laughs> I never touched it, but um, uh, I think the thing that polarized that is that Flanders' match into Sword Soul is not particularly great. Yeah, which made it, which gave the impression that it was like better, which is not really accurate. It's just it's a rougher matchup. Like it's, I think most people would say like in combi heavy combo heavy decks that they would rather play through a Sword Soul bowl than having to draw the out to Flunder. Yeah. Whereas, like, yeah, I don't know, this shifter does very little against Sword Soul and most of the stuff is like, yeah. At least, like, the thing with Sword Soul is that their floodgates didn't hit you. Yeah. They didn't often call wind, and even if they did, oh no, I can't special wind. Anyway, normal, 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 yeah. normal. Yeah. Um, whereas the other way around, Flunder's floodgates hit a lot think... more players. The issue mm. for Flunderies with Protoss was when they called water. Because it stops monster effects as well. 
No. Or is it just can't summon? You cannot special summon. Oh, off you go then. Like, off literally, the that was one of the weaknesses of Sword Soul into Thunder, is, like, the biggest strength of Sword Soul at that time was having the Protoss, and it did nothing to them. It's okay. Andrew's going to go on to Orange in January and play Thunder oh, again. Redemption. He's going he's gonna to redeem himself this time. Top 8, come on 9th. I think I've worked out that I will be free for that. Jake's in for oh, Orange. Already. He said it on the pom- pom- on podcast. <laughs> on the pom-pom. <laughs> on pom-pom. That's how we do it. Um, oh, um, I don't think we've... I've finished my master rule point. Um, so, pass finishes in yes. eight days. Yep. The oldest of the selection packs finishes in five. Yep. So, we are due for a upcoming set. What that set will be, I honestly can't work out. I can't, I can't remember Sprite. what came out after Branded and before Sprite. I can't... Oh, Therion. Oh, yeah. Therion. Yeah, yeah, that's a thing. Also, so, um, Therion Punk going to be a thing pretty soon. We also had... Uh, it was meant to be Labyrinth and... Oh, uh, uh, yeah, true. And the Spelly deck. I've forgotten. Uh, Runic. Runic that's, I kept thinking Mythic and I was like, this is wrong. <laughs> nope. Because um, those were meant to be... Yeah, we meant to, we meant to get those earlier. June. And then we didn't got delayed until like, after we got Sprite. I, was I like, wonder oh, if they really want to make cool. Master Duel like, the most close representation of the TCG and OCG experience and they just go... No, <laughs> no <laughs> get actually, it later. <laughs> this is delayed for Europe, North America. Here you go. Lord. See another. Why? <laughs> they, they'll eventually figure out how to region lock certain cards, and then they'll be like, "Oh yes, jump promos. You don't get those. Yeah, you got to buy the battle pass." Yeah, <laughs> I brought this up a while back. Um, like this was on a, a I think pre Ben podcast. Um, that. At some point, they'll work out that, like, oh, this region likes to play combo decks, so we'll make the combo cards short printed. This region likes to play, um, like, heavy control, stunned, and shit this like that. This was sh- years ago. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I brought this up ages ago. But okay. I, I reckon if they ever work that out, uh, every region would be poor. Yeah. Especially yeah. because no one likes to buy the other region's cards. Yes. <laughs> like, the US market is just like freedom and wants to buy its own shit. And Europe <laughs> just gets like super snobby about the way that US prints look. Yes. And they're just like, it, no, it, 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 it looked bad. That's <laughs> literally me. I'm like, oh. there's always certain cards though. I was like, American Ghost Ogre, nice. There was, back when I was playing Blue Eyes, an alternative in American, I thought was like really nice. American Borrowed Dragon. Oh. Yeah, so it's specific, <laughs> and it's like, it, it, is that right? Because American ones are typically brighter, right? That was yeah. like, and that's just literally it. Some things were like super dark to the point where I'm like, what is even on this art? And then it's really pops in the American, and then so, but the otherwise the opposite is also true. Sometimes it looks a little bit too loud, and you like this whole whole heap getting lost in the, yeah. the look there, and you're like, oh, I it down. don't like the brown of monsters on North American cards. Yeah, it just yeah, it upsets that. me. In some lighting though, American ultra rare monsters look alty. Like the, I remember, yes. Um, yes. I remember Lewis had American Altergeist at one point, yeah, and like he flashed the Melisico Marionetta, I think it was, and I was like, "What the fuck is that?" <laughs> 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 next, next point though, Jake. What's... The next point is our Discord. If you weren't aware, we do have a Discord link. Will be in the description below. Feel free to jump in, say hi, and ask us questions. Where the fuck is the app? There we go. <laughs> um, so, our first uh, comment rather than question comes from Six I Six. Uh, he has a conspiracy theory to share. Oh, okay. Uh, so his conspiracy is Konami have a vast team of smaller resellers on their books to make money on the secondary market, which is why they short print certain cards. Every now and then they funnel 30 to 50 of high price cards, not the Starlights, but like the cost about as much as the product they come up for, uh, to single sellers, single sellers to drip feed into the market and maintain the chase. They don't really need employees <laughs> to do that because yeah. uh, the vendors are doing that just fine. <laughs> the vendors are doing that fine, yeah. Also, um... I suppose one theory with short prints is like they could be doing that so that like we don't get a complete washout of certain metas. Like, just rather the washout. They probably don't because then they have yeah. to ban product a lot sooner, which means they don't get as many sales. Yeah, print monkey board is common, it's fine. I don't think anything like that would happen at a large scale. I wouldn't put it past someone who has like access to. Um, <laughs> if they, Jake's getting a question. 
if it's if it's possible and i still don't think it would happen anyway but if someone had access to say for example like where the starlights are made or things like that i wouldn't be surprised if someone pockets a starlight or two here and there and then just this, happens in to the sell us, it. they don't need to they just give them entire boxes yeah of also that <laughs> that did happen though um which set was it um ghost in the past last year remember someone took a bunch from the warehouse i don't remember hearing about that yeah someone took like a bunch from the warehouse uh, that may have was it proven fake i don't think it was proven fake but I don't know, look, I, I wouldn't condone it, but, like, I can understand people having the temptation if there's, like, if they can get what costs a company probably $5 a card, because Starlight has a fair bit of going on, right? Yeah. Let's just be generous and say it costs them $5 to use all the materials and the time averaged out, all that fun stuff, yeah. the card. If you could, like, nab eight or nine of them and you've got what in the secondary market is between three and $8,000 worth of cards, look... I can see why the temptation would be there. That's, I think, a more realistic conspiracy than the whole company funneling. Yeah. I mean, Konami's huge, right? Like, the card game side of it is, like, tiny. Like, I'm pretty sure they do, like, slot machines and... Pachinko. Yeah. Pachinko is where the real money is for Konami. Exactly We're, we're right. small, small time. Well, it does raise a question whether, like, with the sort of news that you had about people taking things from a warehouse, just how much security and control is in those warehouses. Yeah. Because, like... That doesn't happen that often. Hmm. Yeah. It's a curious question. We'll have to find one of these undercover resellers to... It's kind of interesting, though, because it's not like they'd ever have to report things if they didn't want to, because, like, once again, the, the, for them, the only cost is, like, the literal cost of manufacturing, right? Yeah. It's the secondary market that holds this yeah. insane value to it. So it's like, oh, damn, we're missing nine stars. It's better pay $40 and print nine more. Like, all right, sure. And once again, that's probably being generous as to the cost of printing it. It could also be a um, fact that, like, the people that work in the warehouses are, like, I, I print some fucking children's card game. That's yeah. why it's in Texas. Because there's a bunch of rednecks that are like, <laughs> oh, I don't want none of this card <laughs> game. That's why we never get booba cards. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> a bunch of evangelical Texans that are just like, no, I'm not printing this. Ooh. Yeah. Pharaoh, Pharaoh is already illegal. <laughs> like it's, yeah. It's we fun. only worship one god. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, our next uh, conspiracy theory comes from Jesse. Not our Jesse. Um, Jesse? Uh, <laughs> that's that's just a joke for me and him. Uh, <laughs> uh, his conspiracy theory is Roger and Derek don't actually. Oh, I should probably mention who Roger and Derek are. It's the R and D um, department. Yeah, the R and D of um, Konami is just mm -hmm. two dudes named Roger and Derek. R and D. Fair enough. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, so Roger and Derek don't actually do research and dev, but they are psychologists who have mastered the art of addiction and are just stringing along millions of addicts with this brilliant brainwashing scheme. Who needs drugs when you have shiny cardboard? Okay, sure. Like, I don't know what research you need to do. It's been, like, the same thing for, like, 25 years. So, like, no, the I don't know what they're getting paid for. The, the R&D department is ban list related. Oh. And, like, they just don't actually do R&D for the ban list. They're just like, oh, fucking ban this. It's yeah. very much reactive rather than proactive. Oh, yeah. No, 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 it will be fine. No, it's not. <laughs> it's, it's okay. <laughs> no need to test it beforehand. Out there it goes. Yeah, I mean, to an extent, yeah, but I think people have always said the same thing, right? Like, you could have a team of, let's once again, let's be generous. Like, let's just say 30 or 40 employees designed to, like, think about things, test, and, and think about interactions. And then it's been brought up the point before. It's like, there's, there still cannot be... A, you, you could do that for probably six months, and it still wouldn't compare to the entire player base having two weeks of testing. Like, the, yeah. the brainstorming by comparison... Like, I, and they're like, oh, this is, yeah, this is ridiculous. Some I, stuff's more I can sales. understand that, like, yeah, they'll, they won't pick up on every niche interaction and they probably will miss some stuff. But I think there's a difference to be said between, like, 10 million people testing it yeah. and nobody testing and, it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's a difference between 10 million people and, no million it, it, yeah. and the person who does the ban list being like, we stick mine's fine at three. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, fucking Roger. Also, mm. the only reason I don't believe this conspiracy theory is because I refuse to believe that there's someone called Dr. Derek. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, look, it's... Actually, uh, even Dr. Roger. No. Nah. The... It's, it's too rhymy and schemey. It just doesn't sound right. I mean, let's be honest. We gave up on the, the bin list and the, that team, like, many, many years ago. Like, they've always had the same policy of, like, oh, it's only a problem when the product's a little bit out of date. Yeah. Uh, like, Spiral was around for, God, what, six months too long at that point. At least as, as well, when impressive it as it was. The second time. Yeah. Yeah. And they're like oh sorry like eight months later oh we now realize that master plan is an issue and, and yeah. resource it's like you could just ban master plan uh, from 
the second spiral ban list, they could have just banned Master Plan and they'd never have to look at the deck again. Yeah. Instead, no. <laughs> yeah. The other thing that gets me is that, like the OCG and Duel Links, um, not Master Duel as far as I can remember, they get explanations as to why cards are coming off or coming on. Like, oh, this card's been oppressive for some time, it's making the game unfun, therefore it's getting banned. Or this card uh, no longer sees competitive play. Yeah. Uh, in the current meta, we feel that it's not going to be up to pace, blah, 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 blah. Digimon in the really TCG, well, it's just well. like, yeah. what are you going to fucking do? Jake. Yeah. Jake's like, you ban my shit. Fuck yeah. Off. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, Digimon does that currently at <laughs> the moment. Shit, with, every, uh, with every list, they're currently giving a pretty decent... Oh, sometimes you might even love the explanation, but like at least it's there. Yeah. I think the last time we got with Yu-Gi-Oh, I, I re- if I recall correctly, was around the time of... Extra deck monarchs. Yes, I actually think it was the Necros ban list was the last one they justified. So the one just before extra deck monarchs. Hmm. Yeah, maybe it was. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, I don't know why they don't do that anymore. It's I'd... just like their explanation is like "fuck you." That's why. That was the emergency list, wasn't yeah, the, it? The one they emergency got Jin... list was the last point of communication. Yeah, the Jin yeah. Buster. Yeah. Oh, I suppose we had that as well. Actually, the Pepe e ban list. Yes. Put so in there? the Jin Buster one was the last time they gave proper explanations. I'm fairly sure. The last time they even had any communication was the e ban list. Yeah. And then the that's Pepe ban. Yeah. yeah. And even then, it was like a broad thing, right? It was like due to yeah, something, like, something. This these is. Cards are... This oh, they is were just, they were, they were more just play like. Play if you want to play it. If you don't I, I, play it, I don't even remember if they said that. I just recall it being like, uh, yeah, from the 16th, I think it was onwards, uh, by the way, you can't use this, this, and this. Yeah, it was like the adjusted list. The adjusted like, list. If your locals have... chooses to not do it, don't do it. Regionals and YCSs, they play by this ban list. <laughs> yeah. Uh, our next question, or our first question, really, uh, comes to us from Ragai. What do you think is the most underrated aspect of players in the competitive scene? As in something you don't think pro players get enough attention or credit for? Actually thinking through in-depth interactions and being like, this is the this is the time that I need to hit this. Whereas, like, like that's the difference between all right players and good players, is that good players know their matchup and is like this ash blossom will stop this deck if i hit exactly this point whereas like mediocre to bad players will be like first search ash blossom <laughs> <laughs> yeah knowing your points of interaction on both sides is actually a big one as well like knowing if and when you can let a hand trap through yeah um and that's something i've noticed through too with um replays and stuff that i've watched is like the bad players just like react to the very first thing that happens to them is yeah. like oh no i have to stop this yeah. whereas the other ones are like Okay, well, I've got this and this. I can let this go through. I'll still get to combo. Something, something, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Um, another one, and someone mentioned it further down as well, 6i6 uh, six six mentioned it, is playing the player rather than the cards. Like, there's obviously interactions between the cards, but also reading your opponent. Yeah. Yep. When they're tapping the table. Is that an Abiru in hand? I don't yeah. know. Maybe I should I mean, play And that can be a case. fake out as well, right? Yeah. As well, too. Um, yeah. And knowing when someone's trying to conceal conceal is probably the wrong word but like they're trying to oh, what's the word without making it sound like they're cheating um like they try to disguise their emotions in some extent like some people react kind of, face kind of visibly yeah. as to what they've got and yeah. sometimes you know that it's not a bluff because just the way that they're reacting and then some people are very stoic in their plays you can also um, do the opposite as well too which i think is something that's a little underrated um like either laughing things off maybe not looking like you're taking it too seriously yeah without without misrepresenting the game state um like that can also be a big part of it as well too like yeah. I, I'll, I'll probably haven't really bothered with anything like that since a ycs but like it can be a similar thing like if you're pretty aloof or like someone opens a hand you just kind of you know it could be anything right you can just like kind of open your hand you can be like oh be like, yep fair enough and you've you've emoted that you've like you're like yeah it's done go off king but you've never said that yeah and then fifth summon, bam, a beer, bitch. Like, <laughs> got him. Um, like I think that's another thing as well. But what you're saying as well, yeah, definitely the intricacies. Like I think the what most people don't do, and in some cases can't do, aren't willing to do, is like put in the like literally hundreds of hours into all the matchups that you should respect. Yeah. All those like niche interactions, knowing exactly how far someone could, in theory, extend past or do other things. Like yeah. knowing what their outs would be to your outs. Um, doing the math on, on ratios and other playtesting and um, you know the point I brought up with Drake Slayers before for example like just as an example like knowing intricately you know I, I could get there for example but I'd probably need two months of this deck and probably a whole lot of testing but once again those things in and out I know exactly when to bring it out what to do like I'm more or less there at Flunder or, yeah. or probably close to it yeah um, 
but yeah, I think I think kind of having that bit where you can almost go on autopilot, and then you can I guess reserve some brain power for the like the more important decisions. Yeah. Um, especially if you're playing combo with type decks. So what's interesting about the tier stuff is like it's so off the cuff, right? You're like, hey, what do I get? Like, <laughs> I see this, I see this. And that's probably another thing, right? Like you could you could elaborate on that further, right? You can be like, those if, those people in the top cut right now, they you guaranteed they know back to back. They're like, all right, if this gets milled, this is how we do it. This is the interaction. Yeah. yeah. This is what plays to my best, whilst also playing around what they've got as best as possible. Yeah. Like to an extent, tier has become less and less luck based the more support it's gotten. Um, now that with the Ishizu stuff. Yep. It's less about like what you mill as to when you mill it. Yeah. Whereas before true. it was like you've got an absolute maximum of uh, what would it be five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, twelve mills at most. Yes, that's with your double Merley, uh, Sheeran plus. So Sheeran Merley, uh, the Kid Carlos. Yeah. And then, yeah, I'm sort of discounting hardness to an extent yeah. as well. And then Rhino Heart Yeah, okay. Yeah. So, yeah, 12 without a hardness, and you've got a, say, 40 card deck, even at its tightest. You're not guaranteed to hit every card that you need to actually go off. And that's where the dangers came into it a lot with early builds for yeah. the TCG, at least, because it sort of gave you that utility of, like, oh, I could hit a, da- um, like yeah. a danger, get further into the deck so that I've got more tiers to hit. Or they hit a tier in hand and it triggers and I start to do stuff. Yeah. yeah. Um, whereas now with the issues and stuff, you're sending anywhere of like half your deck to the graveyard if you're playing 40 within your first turn. And then it's like, oh, I've hit too many tiers, I can push them back. It's fine. <laughs> Something mm. to the point of what Andrew said as well, like about the players putting in the hard yards to like learn all this stuff. Being a top tier player is a full time job. Yeah, like, I'd it, agree with that. It is a full time job. You're putting 38 hours a week into learning your matchups. Like, it is a fucking grind. For the genuine pro players, yeah. And then, like, yeah. for example, we will probably do the best we can leading up to YCS. Like, we all have actual jobs and all the rest, right? But yeah. at the same time, you know, we play casually, well, uh, semi competitively, relatively, like, what, once or twice a week at like, locals yeah. and stuff. But, uh, you know, come December, you know, ramping it up yes. to give us the best chance. And... That will probably be the best thing about this year's YCS for us is that it's a week earlier than normal. So we'll be coming off, like, Christmas holidays and stuff like that. So there will be more opportunities for us to test, mm. at least. We won't be, like... You have a week of, like, kind of holiday period. Then you have a week of back into the swing of, lo- like, random life. Then you have the YCS. This year, we could see a lineup of, like... You know, kind of, like, chill, relax period, YCS. Then you get back to your life. Yeah. 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 And hopefully that sees us do a bit of difference. Yeah, I think that's the tough... Yeah, and, and I'll, I'll probably reinforce that one more time, is... is like, I think... Anyone who wants to do well yep. will know their deck back and forth. Yep. And the people who do excellent know every deck back and forth. Like, every relevant deck, obviously, put that in yep. inverted commas. Yep. You know, you're going to give so much respect to certain rogue strategies, but, like, you'll know your top four, top five matchups back and forth. Yep, this is how this usually goes. This is what I need to see to stand a chance. This is what I need to see going first, going second. And you've already done it. Like, I've, I'm not at that point right now, but, like, there's... I know towards those high-end events, usually you're doing it. I'll be like, okay, this is, like, against Sword Soul, I don't know. I know that typically, like, my most optimal side outs are these three cards, exactly these three coming in. I've still got enough engine to push, but I've got the right side cards. Um, because having to think about that mid, um, like, mid side deck, and uh, it's it can be rough because you're like, oh, yeah. you're like, 100%. oh, shit, am I making the right decision? Am I making the wrong decision? The, the difference between having the playtesting already done and knowing this is the best decision. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. Like, if I lose to variance, it is what it is. But I know that most of the time if I see X the result will be Y like that's something that's always frustrated me about that as well is that I will sit down like a week before or whenever before a major event I'll be like these are my side patterns versus like this deck this deck this deck and this deck Mm -hmm. I sit down round one and it's always against Rogue and I'm like (laughs) fucking what am I siding it's only like about Flunder is it's it's typically most Rogues it can smack especially with evenly and lightning storm in the main but hey, are you going first put these cards in are you going second put these cards in thank you <laughs> yeah um and another thing is too is keeping cool under pressure for those um high tier players yeah like yeah it's not all that often unless they're being put under like extreme scenarios that you'll see them sort of get flustered or anything yeah, like, like that crack they don't give away yeah yeah like the most recent time i've ever seen anyone topping and even then um 
it was like very briefly as well, and it was only because someone was having a go. It was um, Bowden in the he um, keeps his Oceanics? School. He keeps yeah. his school very he, well. He kept the school very well until like, like one thing almost went went against him, and he was like, "No, this isn't the way it is." And then when the second thing went against him, he was like, "No, this." And I was like, "This is the first time you've like emoted for a while." Yeah, emoted. <laughs> emoted. At, I know it's, te- it's technically the correct word. It's just funny in that yeah. context. I, I agree, and that's something like I need to work on for YCS as well. For example, like I, I have a very bad habit. You've probably seen it, but like, uh, and I guess you could fake people out with this as well. To be fair, though, so this can go this can go either way. But like, if I know something is very critical as to whether like if it goes through or not if it's going to work like I'll think about it longer I'll kind of teeter on whether I play it or not yeah. I'll probably put it down slower being like fuck do I do this do I not do this and yeah. you're thinking about do I get impermed or this or that and I think that's the worst bit is like if, if read correctly someone's going to be like oh this is a big decision this is like, where I this is this is the crucial point Yeah. but at the same time you can fake like if you've got the extenders and you, that's something you could definitely fake out that's not misrepresenting the game state or anything like that that is just a bit of a, a yeah. mind game could go the other way and that's another thing you could do if you want to take it that far but mm. I got Luke with that today where I was like thinking really heavily on like a certain activation and then I dropped the activation he negated it and I was like yep cool normal summon chief dragon man come on come on come on come on you got a dragon you got a dragon he had like chi Zhao in the back row set and I was like I just need to negate the, I need to bait the chi Zhao, and then I can normal summon the chamber and off I go and then I like just started throwing like random cards out on the board just to try and force everything out. And then he activated the blackout, popped his cheese out, and because I ended up going like uh, triple burst, and I've had a pisty here, so I was like set up to pisty back, and he had used the cheese out. And then I was like, well, he has to use the blackout right now, yeah. and use the blackout. And I was like, yeah, cool, normal summon chamber, full combo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um... And yeah, like you said, it's one of those things you can either that can either help or hinder you is knowing like the pacing of your plays. Yeah, sometimes yeah. you give away what you do by the pace you play it. Sometimes you then put someone in a pitfall because of the pace. So yeah. it's easy to get tilted when you do the maths as well, though. Like when you say, "Oh, like I've done directly, I've kept it at forty. I've got X amount of hand traps. I should open them this percentage of the time." And and all my starters, I've got like for example in Flunder, very rarely happens, but I'm like, I've got seven copies of math effectively in my deck yeah so i get a little tilted when i don't see one i'm like yeah the math says i should see one way to this map every game your hypergeometric or... calculation says it yeah. should be there yeah you're like we why have get... i got three england here like, stop it. we should get uh lachlan on the phone at this point uh yeah he has, he has some words on maths and opening yeah. cards or not opening cards yeah. But anyway, yeah. what's the next question? Yeah. Uh, our next question uh, is from Raga again. Uh, which childhood anime world would you mo- would be the most fun to live in? Pokemon, Yu-Gi-Oh, or Digimon? You can die in Yu-Gi-Oh. <laughs> the Dude, only one, the only one you like legitimately couldn't die in is Pokemon. Digimon, yeah. like every so often, a fucking thing tears in the fabric between the two worlds, and some dino fucker starts. Stomp yeah. in Tokyo. And a bunch of yeah. just like the plebs die, and the main characters are like, oh, I'll save the day. It's like, people are dead. <laughs> <laughs> Your father died. I always get frustrated the same way with Digimon and Pokemon, where they're like, there's always like the main characters, but they literally don't do anything the whole time. It's always yeah. just their like companions. It's like, Ash, what have you ever done with your life, dude? You've just like, you've just got pets that you imprison. Like, <laughs> she shows up and loses at the end. <laughs> that's, all, that's all you've ever done. Even then, 23 of them are Tauros. Yeah. It's like, you could want to live in the Yu-Gi-Oh world, but like, if you're one of those Battle City people that gets taken out by a Red Hunter, ooh, yeah, it's not just, looking good for you. Spots, yeah, like, red... mm. I'd, yeah. Probably, I'd probably choose the Digimon one, I think. That's that's where you're probably least likely to die, I feel. I... So even though the things come through, I swear to God, they've never actually like killed anyone. It depends if you're a main character or not. You're just living in this world. Yeah. True. You gotta be equipped with the plot armor. Yeah. That's true. Yeah, when you have to have plot armor. When a rift happens and your building collapses, it's like Yeah, mm. bro, your insurance would just be through the roof. Like it'd be terrible. Yeah. Insurance uh, sorry, in Tokyo. This is a prone world. area for um Yeah, don't live in Tokyo if like you're in Tokyo. Like, just just live in that world but just be back in Australia where it's just like, oh nothing ever happens here. It's all happening yeah, in it's Japan. It's just randomly Australia. And that's fine. You haven't watched enough Digimon, my friend. Oh, they had, I think it was in the their second, yeah, I think it was in their second series. They had a uh, actual, um, what do they call them? Digi Destin that was from Australia. And his thing was like a crab. <laughs> Very Australian. Sure. <laughs> oh. The Which, unique Australian crab. Literally. Yeah. Um, the answer is Yu-Gi-Oh, but you want to be a background character. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. You pretty much just want to be like Yu-Gi-Moto. That's, that's no. who you want to be. No, no, no. Then you can die. 
Yuki doesn't die. Yeah, but you can die. Mm. You lose the shadow game, you're dead. I never really liked the series, but like the idea of GX being like, ah, oh, if you want to go, to, if you don't want to go to regular school, you can just go to one that's about the card games you play. It's like, yeah, that oh, sounds like a cool way to go to school. Again, like, <laughs> you might die, but apparently we don't speak of GX here. Yeah, actually, the, yeah. The let, let's be more specific. If I was to be in any of them, it would probably be uh, Vrains. Yeah, Vrains seems to be the least dangerous. Oh if no, you're my like shit got normal... Oh well. Yeah, it seems to be the least dangerous, and uh, like if you look at all the other ones, there's something fucked going it's on. Like five like, Ds. First... Welcome to the shithole dimension. <laughs> Literally, like it's like <laughs> you are pro that. now. <laughs> it's that. So the first one, they've Just got shadow games. <laughs> First one, they got Shadow Games. Cunts are losing their soul. Second one is like a school, but it's like a Harry Potter level school where someone's coming to kill you every semester. Yeah. Uh, the third one is Five Ds. Is, yeah. No, Zexel. No, Zexel. Five Ds, yeah. Five Ds. Um, yeah, it's like rich and poor, but on like a mad scale. Yeah. yeah. Um, and everyone close. has to ride motorbikes, and motorbikes are dangerous enough already. Yeah. Like, you, every time you go on a motorbike, you're going to die. Um, Zexel, I, don't, I haven't watched enough of Zexel I, to say from, what's dangerous. But Zexel I've watched is like, welcome to this wasteland. <laughs> like, okay, I don't know. Cool. Zexel's like Omega Cringe. Yeah. Oh yeah, I can't stand the like main character's voice. I just I just can't. And even the anim- animations and stuff, everything's like super dark and edgy and it's just like, no, just stop. Yeah. Um, What was after that? Arc V. Um, Again, char- Dimensional, char- dimensional main character riffs. also very dimensional cringy. Riffs. Oh yeah. <laughs> Dimensional Rifts, uh, the main character is like mega bipolar to a point where they had to separate his personalities into four dimensions. Yes. And each one of his personalities has a girlfriend. Um, <laughs> the and, one Yu-Gi-Oh player that could split into four ways and still have four girlfriends. <laughs> um, and then, yeah, this one, the most recent one, seems to be the most safe. But even then, every so often, someone gets trapped in the digital world for a little while. I just like, uh, I just, I just like, like Brains. I just thought that was just like a nice change of pace for a lot of it, right? Like, the dude... Is honestly like not cringy. There's very minimal cringe or extra stuff. There. I don't know if there's some cringe later. Maybe Jake doesn't like that he has three points for everything. Yeah, Point there is one. that. Yeah. So this is the thing. He reminds me too much of Josh. <laughs> Way too much like Josh. Good thing he's like one... super self-assured, and unfortunately, he's in a position where he can back it up. And so he just keeps really w- annoying. He just keeps winning with Cybers. Yeah, this is Josh. <laughs> <laughs> this is literally just Josh. Josh is the protagonist of Vein. It's actually Josh. Look at this guy's yellow hair. It's just yeah, fucking Josh. Josh. This is Josh and Oh, uh, shit. Um, and just one last thing to mention as well. Uh, not so much a question, uh, but a statement from a new uh, Discord member named Wampa. Uh, no yeah, question, Wampa. but shout out to the guys and people in the Discord for answering his Yu-Gi-Oh questions all the time. Mm, that is a good question. Our Discord is full <laughs> of a bunch of chads, so if you haven't already, please jump in and... Uh, is that subscribe? What is it? Join? Join the Discord. Join the Discord. Yes. yes, that's what they all say. That's what the young people say. Smash yeah. the Discord. <laughs> Smash that Discord button. <laughs> Subscribe to our Discord. Like the comments. <laughs> Pay for Turbo. <laughs> I don't even know what that does. <laughs> Do I? It keeps asking me. Would you like to donate to Go Turbo? No. You want some Turbo? <laughs> <laughs> I think you needed to host um, more than a certain amount of people or something. Okay. Or... Oh, that's not a problem. Um, <laughs> I could be wrong about that. I'm, I, I think I remember that. No, Nick. no, it's definitely to facilitate for like good enough like camera setups and yeah, I think it allows. Oh, it allows yes, a, yes, yes, yes. I know more upload yeah. speed and stuff like that. I think it is, yeah. At one of the remote door ICS, and they're like, during our Discord, they started the ICS, and they're like, we forgot to get Turbo. <laughs> Actually, I've had that on a uh, digital, uh, a Digimon online uh, big regional thing, and they were like, they were like, you will literally get extra packs if you volunteer to use your Nitro to help <laughs> yeah. the server like work. <laughs> Because it's probably not going to work. And we're like, cool story, oh, bro. Fuck, I remember this so, so much dumb. now. I remember them being like, would anyone like to like hook us up with Nitro? <laughs> Please, uh, give us some Nitro. Fucking oh, Jesus. Yeah. Uh, Click the Nitro. <laughs> Join our Nitro. Uh, that does conclude us for today. Thank you all very much for watching. As I said, please uh, join our Discord. Uh, like us on Facebook. If you're there. Follow us if you're watching the stream. Uh, no, podcast. Uh, but yeah, we'll catch you all next week. Peace.